Okay, this is for astronomy. Okay, so this is for astronomy 320. Uh, this is still chapter 5. We're on to the electromagnetic spectrum. We've talked a little bit about it. We talked about the visible section of the spectrum. Okay, that's right about here. That's the part that we can actually see with our eyes. So electromagnetic waves come in all types of different frequencies and there are different wavelengths. And basically the, the speed of light is the same. The speed of light in a vacuum is a constant 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second for all electromagnetic radiation. It's about that same speed in air too. Okay, so the speed doesn't change as we go from radio to gamma rays. But the wavelength decreases as we go from radio to gamma and the frequency increases. So it'll be more cycles per second if we're traveling at the same velocity and the wavelength is getting shorter. It makes, makes common sense. Radio waves have the lowest frequency and energy and the longest wavelength. So here we have the radio. Actually, we, we got a better one down here. but uh, Gamma rays have the highest frequency and energy and the shortest wavelength. And again, the velocity is the same. So as we go from radio to gamma rays, okay, the wavelength is going to decrease. The uh, frequency increases and the energy increases. Th th these, uh, this radiation down here, gamma ray radiation, has way more energy, <coughs> for example, than radio. It, it, the energy increases as we go from radio to gamma rays. You see radio waves can be as big as buildings, people, butterflies. We get down to pinheads, then we're starting to talk more of the infrared. Visible is like dust particles, bacteria. We get down into ultraviolet, it's like a molecule there. We get down to X-ray, we're talking about the, the, the size of an atom. And then we get down to gamma rays, we're talking about the wavelength, the size of a nucleus. So radio waves vary. You don't have to remember these frequencies. Just remember that radio waves have the lowest frequency. They have the longest wavelength. Look at that. I looked it up. 10 million uh, wavelength down to about one millimeter. <coughs> so those are like lengths that we are used to. So the size of mountains down to the size of a pinhead, AM and FM radio, cellular phones, Wi-Fi, all make use of radio waves to communicate. Now, microwaves on there too. It's like some places put microwave within the radio wave region, and some people sometimes you see it set apart from from radio waves. So it's, it's no, there's no um, consensus on that. Infrared radiation, you can see what it varies from in its wavelengths. The size of a pinhead down to dust particles. Okay, you can see that's the mouse and infrared over here. Night vision equipment makes use of IR radiation. Also, they use infrared heat lamps to keep food warm, I guess, in some fast food restaurants. A uh, whole, whole mess of things. Visible is the part that we can see. There you got the wavelengths there. Um, 700 nanometers down to 340 nanometers for the wavelength. So now we're really small. From the size of a dust particles down to the size of bacteria. Ultraviolet light. Okay, you got the wavelengths, you got the frequencies. Bacteria down to the size of an atom, so we're talking about molecules. X rays. All sorts of applications for X rays. Ultraviolet, by the way. Okay, that's what can cause skin cancer, so you don't want to be get exposed to it too much. But it also gives you a certain vitamin. I think it's vitamin B or D that's good for you. So you want some exposure to the ultraviolet light from the from the sun. And then also, apparently, ultraviolet light kills the coronavirus, what I've heard. X-rays, it's about the size of an atom, all sorts of medical purposes. Gamma rays, okay, this is a shot towards the Milky, center of the Milky Way galaxy. And you can see right in there, that's probably where the supermassive black hole is, that's ripping things to shreds sending out all this energetic radiation in the form of gamma rays. There, it's, it's really hot right there, right there where the center of the Milky Way galaxy would be. Okay, um, about the size of a nucleus, gamma rays can be so energetic they can destroy iron core of a star and bring on a supernova explosion. So when stars bigger than our sun, it won't be our sun, but bigger than our sun, uh, start to fuse and fuse and fuse, they get down to the point where they have an iron core. They can't get any more energy out of the iron core because you can't get any more because iron's the most stable nucleus. You'll lose energy after that. So what happens is you get this big iron core and you've got all these gamma rays running around. They actually destroy the, the iron. They break it up into a bunch of protons and neutrons. 
and then the protons and the electrons combine to be, give you more neutrons, and that's where you get the neutron star from. Leftover remnants of a, super, a core collapsed supernova. So that's what gamma rays can do. This is, I highly recommend this video. It's a great video. It's an introduction, and there's a whole series. If you want to go on and re see more about radio waves and stuff like that, but there you've got the, you've got the um, link right there. I mean, I've, I've, if we were in class, I would be showing this to you. We take time out to, sh to watch it, so I would definitely watch this. It's, it's got a lot of good information about about the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, black body spectrum. So this would be the black body. So we've got different types of stars. There's red stars, blue stars, stars that are like our sun are yellowish. Okay, so they have different temperatures. The cooler stars, okay, those guys are going to be more red. Okay, the hotter stars, they're going to be more blue. It's going to move up. This hump is going to move up. So basically, the hotter object is, the shorter the wavelength and higher the frequency and energy it will radiate. So things around the room, if you just look at them, if you turn the lights out, you wouldn't be able to see them. Okay, they radiate maybe infrared radiation. Okay, we can't see infrared radiation. But you start to heat things up, and they start to glow red hot. Like this is it, this is light coming from that iron right there. Iron at room temperature, the dark cannot be seen because we cannot see the wavelength it it radiates. Heat the iron at a certain temperature, it will glow red. So we've gotten it hot enough to where it's actually glowing. It's putting out red, maybe a little bit of yellow too, but a lot of red. Okay. Stars are like this too, and here we can see if we look at the black body curve. And we're to a point now <coughs> where all we need to do is measure the two intensities and two wavelengths. So in other words, this is intensity versus wavelength. I'm used to this being frequency down here, so I've got to get used to it being backwards. But uh, you've got the wavelength down here, so you can see that these are longer wavelengths, more towards the, the lower energy type things. These would be the, higher, the, the shorter wavelengths, higher frequency, higher energy. So if it's a lower energy, you're going to get red. If it's a, they got they got the colors. This would be like a red star, lower energy. This is like our sun here. Actually, our sun is going to be, well, okay. So anyway, this is yellow. Then you got the green going like this and the blue. Remember the Roy G. Biv, R, O, Y for yellow, G for green, and you got blue indigo violet. So we go to the, the to the to the higher energy colors for higher temperatures, and stars follow that. The red giants are really cool stars. The red dwarfs are really cool stars. The blue giants are very, very hot stars, and stars like our sun are at the middle of the of the pack there. Um, they're the, the medium, the middle part of the color spectrum. And you can see more uh, dealing with stars. And this time they're, they're doing frequency, so it's going the other way. So you can see the red is over here. See up here, they're doing wavelengths, so red was going this way. And down here they're doing frequency, so they, it's, it's, it's in the opposite direction. You can see the red, you can see the yellow, and you can got all the way up to the blue up there. So that's how the black body curve works. So we get one frequency and measure the intensity. Actually, they got temperature here. This is oh, this is temperature. Actually, the way the, this is a, more of a black body curve. So you get one wavelength and you measure the intensity. Then you get a second wavelength for that same source of light. So you got two points. And now we're so good at it. All we have to do is do those two points. Most of the time they'll do like yellow filter. They'll filter out all the light except the yellow, and then they'll do like a blue filter. So they'll have a data point there and a data point, a data point there and a data point there. And that tells them, oh, we know what the rest of the curve is. This must be 4,400 Kelvin. Okay? So we've got it down to that. So that's where the black body curves come in strong. I was looking over your book. I didn't really see much about it. Okay. Um, black body curve spectrum. Wait, we just had that picture. It's the same one as up? No, it's not quite the same one as up here. See, it's a lower temperature. See, it's even, it's just barely, we don't even see that. Okay, so, now the Doppler effect is the last thing we have here. So, this is supposed to be a person right here, a stick figure. I, I probably should have picked a different color, it stood out more. I didn't realize that it doesn't stand up. There's a person right there, you can hardly see him. All right, so the car is moving towards the person, and, it's, and that actually, in this picture, the car is not moving towards the person, it's sitting still. They honk their horn for some dumb reason. And you're here, and then you hear, ah. Okay, now the car starts to speed towards you. Look what happened to the wavelength. As the car is making the sound, it moves into the sound, so the wavelengths get compressed. Now you hear a higher pitch. You hear a, ee, you hear a higher pitch squeal. The, 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 the horn sounds higher to you. 
than it did before. Now the car's past you, you're over here now, the car's going away. Now because it's going away from you, it's stretching. It's stretching the wavelength. So now that you have the, the longer wavelength, you're going to hear a lower pitch. So it's just like you're standing by a, a car on the going past you at a high rate of speed. It comes toward you, it goes ee like that. Ee. You can hear it better here when you do this. This video is very, very good. Again, if we were in class, we'd be watching this video. You got the link there. This does everything. This, this, this gives you all the sound effects. That they do a better job than I can with the sound effects. So you got this video to watch. Okay, and then um, light waves also display. So the this, this same Doppler effect that moving objects moving towards you, the, the wavelengths are compressed. Objects moving away from you, the... The, the wavelengths are stretched. Okay, so we hear that at high pitch to low pitch. A high frequency, high pitch, low frequency, low pitch when it's moving away from us. High frequency, high pitch when it's moving towards us. So, light from the stars does the same exact thing, or light in general does the same exact thing. So, the universe is expanding. How do we know this? Edwin Hubble, the guy that the telescope is named after, saw that distant galaxies had their wavelengths shifted towards the longer values. They were red shifted. They, and that's a common term. If, if something has its light shifted towards the longer wavelengths, we say it's red shifted, and if it's because it's moving away from us, if it's if it's moving towards us, the wavelengths are shifted towards shorter wavelengths, and we say that it's blue shifted. So you're, even if we're talking about X-rays or, or radio waves, we're not even talking about light. They'll say red shifted, blue shifted for those two situations. So what Hubble saw <coughs> was that the light coming from these distant galaxies wasn't quite what was expected. They were all shifted towards the longer wavelength, red shifted. That means they're moving away from us, okay? So that's what Hubble discovered. So now we've got the, um, okay, so here's the new one. It's, it's up on, it's up on um, Canvas. It's right here, okay? It's due Thursday, but we're going to do it right now anyway. Okay, so, <clears throat> What happens to the speed of waves in a vacuum or in air as we move from radio waves to gamma ray rays on the electromagnetic spectrum? It stays the same. It's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay, it stays the same. Where we went past it? Yeah, I went past it. There it is. The speed in a vacuum is a constant 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second for all electromagnetic waves. Okay, sketch without numbers a black body curve, label the axes, what information do we need to make a black body curve, what information do we get from a... So, you, you need to get either the wavelength or frequency, those two are interchangeable. You got one, you can figure out what the other one is, okay? Every wavelength goes with one specific frequency, every frequency goes with one specific wavelength. Because it's, it's like speed of light C, which is constant, equals wavelength times frequency. So, frequency equals speed of light divided by the wavelength, and so so forth. So anyway, the other, then the, on the vertical axis, you plot the intensity. Okay, so what you get from it, though, is then you're going to get the, um, so there's one. you got the wavelength along this axis. You've got, so it could be wavelength or frequency. you got the intensity, how bright, how much energy are you getting at that wavelength. And then from that, you get the temperature. You don't graph temperature on the axes. You're using the data you have of wavelength and intensity, and you get your data points. You only really need two. Once you got those two data points, you know what the curve looks like. You know what the temperature is of that object, that faraway star you're looking at. You know what the temperature is. Okay. Explain the Doppler effect. Give an example of how astronomers make use of the Doppler effect. Well, the Doppler effect, again, Something is emitting a wave. It could be a sound wave. It could be a light wave. If that object is moving towards you, the uh, wave is compressed. So you would hear a higher pitched sound if it's a sound wave, or you would see uh, the wavelengths shifted towards the shorter wavelength part of the spectrum. And then if it's moving away from you, the opposite happens. The, the wavelengths are stretched. So then you would see that the light, for example, the sound waves have a lower pitch longer wavelength or it would be uh, shifted towards the sh longer wavelength type red shifting. Okay, blue shifting if it's moving towards you, red shifting if it's moving away from you. Okay, draw a diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum starting with longer wavelength, show the direction of increasing frequency 
um, energy frequency and wavelength. So we've got the uh, electromagnetic waves. As I pass them, you know, they're up here. Okay, this isn't in order, obviously. So here we got the electromagnetic spectrum. As we go from radio to gamma, the wavelength decreases, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The frequency increases, okay, and the energy increases, okay. All right. So then, I'm going to just kind of sketch that, draw what, which which is which. All right. Um, after we're looking at this, okay. Um, for the visible part of the spectrum, we already talked about this. List the colors from longest wavelength to shortest wavelength. Again, it, it, Roy G. Biv. Just remember: red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So the red has the longest wavelength, the lowest frequency, the lowest energy, all the way to the violet, which has the highest frequency, the highest energy, but the shortest wavelength. If we go back to the diagram. See, the visible is right in here. So you got the red here, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo might be in there someplace. I'm not make sure what indigo looks like. Violet. <coughs> okay. So it's right in there, and it's and so red is closer. To, red is right next to infrared. Uh, violet is right next to ultraviolet. And so the red's closer to the radio side, and the violet's closer to the gamma ray side. Uh, is that a repeat? That's a repeat of number one, isn't it? Yeah, I just... Uh, okay, so that's it. So, again, this will be covered on the quiz. That'll be a week from today, which... And today is... What is today? Today is Tuesday. So, we'll have a quiz a week from today on this material here. Okay, now, I'll try to put up another... And, again, this is a new PowerPoint. I mean, this it's the same one. Okay, it's, it's the same chapter... Oh, wait, not chapter 18. It's the same... Um, Chapter 5. Okay. But you got to download it again because I've added stuff to it. So if you go to uh, here, you got your PowerPoint 5. Okay. That's, a, that's just the one I just got uploaded. Okay. So then there's that one. So let me call it a quits for now. I'll try to put another one up maybe Thursday. I got uh, now Sac State's kicked in and now I've got uh, the lab to worry about. So I got a bunch of stuff. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening and I'll talk to you later.